magnets, flywheels, reciprocating engines, transformers, tripods with mysterious boxes and radio tuners. How do the pieces of this puzzle fit together? And could the answer be a way to defy gravity and a spectacular end to the energy crisis? With rolling blackouts and gas prices skyrocketing at the pumps, you won't want to miss what comes next. According to reports, whenever someone came up to the castle and rang the correct number of times to gain entrance, Leed Scalman would cover up his tools before coming out to talk to the person. Why was Leed Scalman so secretive about how he moved the huge coral stones? People also said he had a sixth sense to detect if someone was secretly watching and he would immediately stop working and simply putter around. There is a mindset called the Italian tile layer syndrome. These renowned tilers would go all over the world laying tile for important buildings and people. No one was allowed to watch them because they were protecting their trade secrets. I believe that Leed Scalman had this kind of mindset. Was Ed Leed Scalman so secretive about his construction methods and about himself that he even used a hidden code in his writings? Leed Scalman self-published this curious little book called A Book in Every Home. Following each page, he left a blank page with this explanation. Reader, if for any reason you do not like the things I say in this little book, I left just as much space as I use so you can write your own opinion opposite it and see if you can do better. It's possible that he left the empty space for the reader to decipher a code hidden in metaphors in his book. The code may ultimately reveal how he built Coral Castle. The book also talks about family life, Sweet Sixteen, and how to raise boys and girls. One curious sentence says, Don't raise girls too big by overfeeding them. Could raising girls be a metaphor for raising a stone? In Lee Scalding's writings on magnetic current, he suggests a series of experiments using magnets. Perhaps these experiments are an important key to understanding how lead scaling using anti-gravity moved coral blocks. That Ed's secrets lie hidden in code and metaphors in his writing is an intriguing possibility. But can we look anywhere else for evidence that Ed really figured out how to eliminate or minimize the effects of gravity? Did some neighbors penetrate the wall of secrecy and actually catch Ed? One legend is that there were some children spying on Ed undetected and saw him floating coral blocks in the air like hydrogen balloons. There are additional reported incidents. In 1936, Leed Scalman decided to move his original castle in Florida City, Ed called it Rockgate, to Homestead reportedly to escape the threat to his privacy from a subdivision to be built nearby. He dismantled the castle and moved it, stone by stone, to Homestead, where it is today. For the first and only time, Leed Scalman sought help with the move. Ed Leed Scalman hired a tractor to pull the chassis of an old truck that he had. He had the driver leave the empty truck and come back the following morning to haul the full load of heavy coral stone to Homestead. But once, the driver came back unexpectedly after only 30 minutes. To his amazement, he found that the truck was already loaded down with several huge blocks of coral. The driver remembered. It was impossible to have stacked those gigantic blocks in under 30 minutes, even with a steam-powered derrick. And Ed had no equipment, just a simple tackle and chain hoist. Yet there they were, piled like cordwood. When the truck moved the 23-ton obelisk, Leed Scalman told the driver that he would have it raised in position by the following morning. And indeed, when the driver returned the following morning, the obelisk was raised. But why did Leed Scalman undertake the daunting task of moving the entire castle 10 miles from Atlantic City to Homestead, Florida? Was there a reason besides the prospect of a housing development close to the castle? And does the actual location of the castle itself contribute to its mystery? Some researchers believe that there is an energy grid that is formed around the entire Earth, an invisible pattern of energy lines that concentrate points of electromagnetic energy where the lines intersect. Did Leed Scalman somehow learn the secrets of this energy grid? And is Coral Castle a power point 
I've heard that it had a map of the magnetic energy points of the Earth. Ray Stoner, in his book, The Enigma of Cora Castle, suggests that Liscani moved the original castle to Homestead, not because of an encroaching housing development, but because a surveying error misplaced the original castle 10 miles from the energy grid. Captain Bruce Cathy, a commercial pilot and author, is considered the world's leading authority on the energy grid. Well, I've just recently been running um, the uh, given position of Coral Castle through my computer using the computer program that we've developed and I found that there is a definite link uh, with gravitational forces and also uh, a link there with the Earth's magnetic field. So it's obvious that Ed definitely knew something about Einstein's E equals MC squared and the unified fields. Uh, he was well ahead of what everybody thought he was. He wasn't dumb. He knew something. There are other well-known anomalies and monuments on this energy grid, including Stonehenge on the Salisbury Plain in England and the Pyramids and the Sphinx on the Giza Plateau. Interestingly, many questions surround the construction of these huge monuments and how they were built with the primitive technology of ancient times. Did Ed Leeds Scalman really understand how to use this so-called energy grid? And is it even possible to speculate on how Lee Scalman used his unconventional view of matter and magnets to achieve anti-gravity? Here is my idea of how Lee Scalman flipped the magnets in his coral blocks and achieved anti-gravity. I believe Lee Scalman lifted a coral stone with the chain hoist, just enough to get the wire cable, coming from the small box on the tripod, wrapped around the stone center. Then he went back to the tool shed and he cranked the flywheel and kept it turning with the reciprocating engine. The flywheel transmitted a frequency to the small box on the tripod. The tuners in the box converted the frequency into an electromagnetic field around the coral block, thus flipping the magnetic pole in the coral and neutralizing its weight. As yet, there is no working model based on my theory on how Lee Scalman easily moved his stones, but the day when that can be demonstrated is close. Perhaps some oddities reported about Leed Scalman do make sense. What about the neighbors who reported hearing Leed Scalman singing to the stones? The singing they heard might very well have been the sounds of frequencies coming from the flywheel and the box on top of the tripod as he moved huge blocks. There are a number of tantalizing clues. For example, here in Ed's tool shed are bottles wound with copper wire and a variety of radio tuners. What could be the significance of these objects? I believe Lee Scowlin was experimenting to find the frequencies that would work to flip the magnets in the block. And perhaps each block had a different resonant frequency. If all of this, or if any of this is possible, perhaps even some of the structures constructed by Ed Lee Scowlin at Coral Castle take on a new significance. For example, isn't it going just a bit far to create a separate room for the punishment of children you don't know if you'll ever have? I discovered that Ed's repentance corner is like a dead sound chamber where perhaps he listened to different frequencies on his radio tuners. Ed Leeds Scalman's construction of Coral Castle seems to elude any explanation based on known science and conventional tools. but. What if we open our minds just a little bit? What if it really is possible to eliminate or greatly lessen the effect of gravity? What would the world look and be like with a new science and Ed Leeds Scalman's tools? Could it help explain some mysteries from our past? Leeds Scalman would appreciate that I'm here at the Florida table, cut into the shape of the state of Florida. He envisioned sitting here with the governor of Florida, along with the legislature, sitting in the rocking chairs discussing important matters. If anti-gravity is the answer to Lee Scalman's construction of Coral Castle, it will be possible to finally know how Stonehenge, the Sphinx, and the Great Pyramid, and other ancient monuments were constructed, all unexplained by the primitive technology of their times. My research shows that the Great Pyramid was a geomechanical power plant, that responded sympathetically with the Earth's vibrations, converting that energy into electricity. The Egyptians used the same principles of anti-gravity that Ed Lee Scalman understood and created an unlimited source of clean energy.